Hello fellow data friends. I expanded my codes and I can track markets now. The time lapse part is only about 2 minutes, then we talk more about some statistics. Or use a timestamp if you don't want some background information while the time lapse is running. On the left side of the time lapse, you can see a bar chart race. Goods are ordered by global market value. For each market, I multiplied the sell orders with the market price. Just using the total amount of sell orders seemed unfair, since for example grain is rather cheap. And then I summed up over all the markets and here we are. This also means I didn't account for trade routes. This can inflate some values because some sell orders might be counted double. Say for example a country is producing oil, then the market of that country has oil sale orders. Another country buys some oil and sells the oil in its own market. Then the other market has also some oil sale orders, but it's just reselling. I have no idea how I could track trade routes, but still good enough. Also, you might be wondering about the total value in pounds. If you sum up all the shown numbers, you get maybe 20 to 30 million pounds. That's less than Russia's starting GDP, that can't be right. Well it can, because the country GDP is yearly GDP. You can clearly see that at the state level. These goods would never sum up to the total value given, because you need to multiply with 52. Also, Paradox uses value added GDP, I just multiply the number of sell orders with the price, but still good enough. Paradox will rework trade in 1.9 and will add a world market. That's why I originally expanded my codes. Wouldn't it be cool if we can track the world market to see how much the AI can interact with this feature? Chances are we can. After getting access to all the country markets, it will hopefully be easy to get data from the world market as well. Once 1.9 drops, I will run again 5 time lapses, and then we can do some statistics on the results. We reach 1940 and tools, coal and steel are clearly the most produced goods in terms of total value. After 1920, even oil and engines showed up in the top 15. Before we dive deeper, I'm not exactly sure how I should prove to you that my numbers are correct. The only way I can think of is that it would be way more effort to fake this in a believable manner. Let's dive deeper on the current market. Staple goods first. On the left side is a bar chart, again with the total value calculated as sell orders multiplied by the price in all markets. On the right side is an excel sheet of the actual buy and sell orders. I don't think there's anything noteworthy for the staple goods but feel free to study the numbers. Local goods next. I actually just used the total market buy and sell orders and calculated the price according to the formula on the wiki. I did not go through each state. Transportation has a lot more buy orders than sell orders. While electricity is clearly third, you can see that there is still demand not yet satisfied. When we look through Europe, you can see that most states just have a single power plant. Granted, they often use the coal production method. But the coal production method produces 100 electricity per power plant, which means there are maybe 500 power plants in the whole world. According to the wiki, there are 660 states, so it's at most one power plant per state. But when does the AI actually start using electricity? This graph shows the world sale orders for electricity. The first sale orders appear around 1883. If you don't focus on researching electricity, that seems reasonable to me, but it is starting to really take off after 1910. Luxury goods. While no one is producing radios, some people are aware of their existence and want to buy some. Most luxury goods are actually overproduced or are balanced. But the world craves more automobiles. 8000 buy orders versus 4000 sell orders. And telephones are also in demand. Let's have a closer look. At first, at least Britain has radios researched, but they are not producing some. Oh, they don't even produce telephones, that's done by their colonies. So Quebec? Switching to radios would tank their profits. Because of electricity? Okay, they only have one power plant. Anyway, telephones appear around 1917 and show a steady growth. Automobiles appear around 1905 was a great success, stalled a bit, was again a great success, and the supply mostly stalled. But why? 
Great Britain is the leading producer for automobiles and their automobiles are expensive. They actually produce most cars in Ireland and the factory is making quite a profit. Input prices are fine and output prices are expensive. Why wouldn't they just build more? This graph shows automobile buy and sell orders. Automobiles were always in high demand. A bit strange. Industrial goods. There are still about 3000 clippers being bought in 1940. And seems like the AI is actually capable of producing some oil. But interestingly, the AI is selling more oil than it's using. Same for rubber actually. Also, rubber is pretty low on the ranking. If you look around Africa, we can very easily spot a lot of unused rubber plantations. Same for oil in the Middle East. Looking at the British heartland, we can see they don't have any peasants left, but several buildings are lacking full employment. But since they barely have any electrical power, they will not use the next level of labor saving production methods. But building in another power plant level would actually not earn enough money to pay the wages because engines are expensive. Britain is even importing 1000 engines and it's still far off. But when we look at our excel sheet again, we can see that the whole world wants more engines in general. And at least Britain would make a nice profit from building more engine factories. But I'm guessing they're missing laborers? You see the vicious circle. And here are the timelines of oil and rubber cell orders. There's already some oil in the early game, which should be sourced from whaling. Oil cell orders start to pick off after 1910. And the rubber productions start at 1880 and is only increased very slowly. Let's have a look at the military goods. While the chart looks like there's no market for aeroplanes, that is actually a rounding problem. Because someone is buying 1.3 planes, but it's not even a single buyer. The leading producer for aeroplanes is Scandinavia, producing 0.86 aeroplanes. And the Pops are buying 0.33 aeroplanes. Might just be some touristic airplane rides, but it's not fully booked. Or you could see it as an average per week. So buying 0.33 airplanes would mean buying one airplane every three weeks. Also, ammunition seems to be rather expensive. There are a lot more buy orders and sell orders, while small arms are being overproduced. Nobody is using Man of Wars anymore, which I think is good. But there are no tanks either. The trade rework for patch 1.9 will produce a world market for autonomous trade. I want to do a similar video where I track the world market, because I want to know how much the AI can and will use that new feature. Do you have any recommendations? What could they do better? And a big thanks to Solfi for supporting my channel as data capitalist. Very much appreciated. If you want to see how you can nudge a company to actually build a lot with the massive company construction bonus, click on the top video. Thanks a lot for watching and I see you on the next video.